Okay, so in this next part, we're going to be looking at some simple techniques to create some nice textures on our model. And we're going to be building our own material. So I'm going to do a rough damaged jerry can red. And the reason we're going to build building our own instead of using these smart materials, even though these smart materials are really good, they're really nice and can be used to add a little bit of extra detail into your models, uh, they are very recognizable for what they are and often don't do um, realism justice in the fact that, for example, if we drop the steel paint on here, you can see that every single edge is worn in exactly the same place. And this just isn't realistic. This wouldn't happen in real life. For this to happen, someone would have had to have rubbed the edge of this cap here repeatedly, perfectly, or scraped off all the metal in exactly the same way every single time. And it's just, it just wouldn't happen like that. You get much more variation. Um, so even with stuff like this, you need to layer it up and you need to add variation and even some hand painted details. Now, the other thing is the very recognizable. So when you send your portfolio into a company, the uh, artists at that company will most likely have a look at your portfolio to see or to help the producer or whoever is dealing with the hires to uh, to estimate the the skill level of the person they want to hire. And if you have a portfolio full of items that have just had smart materials dropped onto them, then it is it's very recognizable. We can often tell what smart material you've used and it tells very little story. So uh, you will le have less likelihood of being hired because you know, people don't want to hire someone just to come in to drop smart materials onto things. People want to hire people that can build their own materials and bespoke materials. So make sure with every opportunity you get, you try to make your own materials. Um, obviously time's a limiting factor and stuff like that, but it's always best to try uh, to make as much of, your, of the stuff yourself as possible. Okay then, so what we're gonna do is create a nice red jerry can, worn jerry can material. So to start off with, I wanna make a nice metal material for the base of this. So I'm going to make a new folder and I'm gonna call this uh, red can. And then in there, I'm gonna create another new folder and I'm gonna call it metal base. So I like to make sure that everything's in separate folders. It makes it much easier to start blending stuff later on. So in this metal base, base I'm gonna add a fill. And I'm gonna drop it in that metal base. And then this fill, I'm going to make my base metal. So I'm gonna make it kind of a mid gray and I'm gonna change it to zero or metallic. And metallic should always be zero or one. There isn't any in between if you want it to be realistic. And I'm going to turn the roughness up a little bit as well. So we can add a roughness map to this to get a nice specular look. But if we right click on this and go to add filter, in the filter section, there are quite a few nice metal finishes anyway. So if you hover over each one of these, you can see that we have like galvanized, we have brushed, and I want just a grainy one. So first of all, the grain is way too strong. So what we can do is we can come up to scale and we can just scale that down a little bit. And this will increase the um, density of those grain points. And then we can change the intensity as well. So we just want to drop that down a little bit. And I'm going to adjust the color a little bit, make it a bit brighter. And then what I want to do is just add a little bit of a sharp into that grain as well. So what I'm going to do is right click, add another filter and then go down to sharpen. And what I want to do is tick on normal and then just increase the intensity of that. Okay, so I have like this stippled grain and you can go over this and just change the scale and the intensity until you get something that's what you want. Maybe you don't want grain, maybe you want brush metal or something like that. Okay, now I want to add a little bit of break up to the, um, the roughness of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the roughness to a new layer over the top. So you can create an empty layer or a fill layer. And then we're going to turn off everything on that layer other than roughness. 
And then in the roughness map, we're going to go down and find some grunges. Now, there's loads and loads of grunges in uh, Substance Painter. I normally find the one that I want in here rather than having to import extra ones or make my own. There's some really nice scratch grunge uh, textures in here as well. So here we have these two. We have uh, scratches and we have uh, grunge scratches. So I'm going to select grunge scratches. And then I want to increase the tiling of this. So if we go up on here, we can turn, change the scaling. So if I type three in here, get it quite dense. And then I want to just play around with the balance and the contrast. And you can also invert it. But I think I'm happy with that. So then, uh, this is obviously very intense. What I want to do is come back down to that fill layer and I want to reduce the blending of the overall roughness. And I can do that by going to where it says base color and change this to roughness. This allows me to get up the opacity details for the roughness and then just turn that down. So I just want it quite subtle. And to make sure that things are looking nice, it's always good to hold shift and right click, uh, sorry, left click in the background and just spin around that model to see the light reflecting off that roughness and it'll give you a good idea of the level that you've got that and if it's right. Okay, so I like that for a base metal. We can always come back and change it later on. Uh, so one thing I want to do is make sure it's assigned just to this. Now, because this red can will only be on the central bits here, I'm going to go up to the original uh, folder icon that we've got everything contained into. I'm going to right click that folder icon and I'm going to go up to add a black mask. Now we can either do this through black mask or color mask. I'm going to do it through a black mask. With that black mask selected, I'm going to go down here uh, to polygon fill. And with polygon fill, we've got a few different options. We've got either triangle, we've got polygon, which is a square, we've got mesh fill, or we've got UV chunk fill. So if we select UV chunk fill, for example, and then come to our UVs and select the front panel, you can see that it will fill that front panel with white in the map. And that will be what will be colored by all them maps that we've just made. Uh, if it's all attached together as one mesh, then we can come up to the mesh fill. Just click that mesh and it will fill everything and all the UVs corresponding to that mesh. So I just want to go around and fill in a few more little pieces. So I want them to be red as well. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Oh, just this one that's last little bit. Okay, so now all these things will be painted our red eventually. So anything we make in this folder will be contained in here. Okay, so now we just need to, we've got a metal base, so we need to make a new folder above that and we can call this paint. Maybe I'm gonna call it paint A in case we want two layers of paint. And in there, I'm gonna create a fill layer and I'm going to make this fill layer our base color. So I'm going to make it a nice deep saturated red. And what we want to do with this is get the roughness roughly right, roughly right. And it'd be kind of quite reflective. Okay. And then I also want to add a roughness layer above that. So again, I'm going to add another layer um, within paint A, and I'm just going to turn off everything but rough. And then in this roughness slot, I'm going to go find another grunge map that'll look nice for this paint. And then again, like before, we want to just play around the balance and get this Looking nice. Maybe increase the tiling by two. And then again, with roughness selecting our layers, we can come here and we can just decrease the amount of that on that. And then maybe go back to our original red base and just increase the roughness on that to make it overall a little bit more reflective. 
And it's a case of just going back and forth and adjusting these until you get the look that you're going after. And I also want to add a little bit of a sharp into this. So I'm going to right click the roughness layer. I'm going to add a filter. And then in the filters, I'm going to go down and add a sharpen. And then I'm just going to decrease the intensity of that sharpen a little bit. So once you've got your initial uh, paint layer that you're happy with, we can start to break up some of the edges of this. So we can come back to our Paint A folder and we want to right click on this and add a black mask. Now we're going to generate our own edge mask, but there are also smart masks here and a lot of these are very, very useful to use as a base. But um, the most powerful version of doing this is to just make your own. So in this black mask, we're going to right click it and we'll, this time we're going to add a generator. If we click the generator, we get lots of different things we can use. Uh, my favorite one though is this mask editor. So in this mask editor, we've got a global balance so we can see that grow and fade. Uh, so we just want to do a global invert because we want the edges to be highlighted on this. And the main thing we're going to be using for edges is the curvature. So in here, we've got curvature opacity. Everything else is turned off. We can click on curvature to get the drop down, and here you get the different types of curves. So everything from huge all the way to fine, sharp. We can also change this to cavities as well if we were dealing with cavities. Uh, but for now, we're going to deal with this. So I'm going to turn off all the large curves first of all, and I'm just going to start with the sharp ones. So I'm going to increase that so we get a lot of those sharp edges, and then I'm going to go through fine and then just increase that a little bit. Now I want some of the large edges as well being worn off. So at the moment it's all very soft. Um, so we will be dealing with that. And we can also come down here and change the contrast of them edges. And we can also change the brightness as well, which is the overall brightness of the red paint. For this we want to keep it at zero because we don't want any kind of fade on the bits that don't have the edge detection on. So I don't want these to look so soft, so we need to add a bit of texture in here to start breaking it up. So here we've got the two texture sliders. We've got two textures that we can put in here. Uh, so I'm just going to increase in the uh, opacity of one of these. Uh, but at the moment, there's no texture actually in this. So we come down to the bottom, we've got our two texture slots. So in this top texture, I'm just going to select a grunge map with a lot of contrast. So I'm going to try this grunge dirt muddy. And then I'm going to come back up to my texture settings. And in this number one texture, I'm going to drop that down. So I'm going to change this to subtract. And what I'm trying to do is just get a little bit of uh, variation to the edges of this smooth curvature. So we can change the scale. And the contrast. And then we can add a second texture in here as well. Now, this is quite an advanced way of building up your maps, but it's well worth practicing because you can get some much, much nicer and more refined maps this way. So there's still quite a lot of very neat edges around here. So what we could do is come in and paint some of them out. Uh, but first of all, I'm just going to double up on our edge wear and this time minus it. So what we could do is in our mask, we can actually add multiple masks to this mask. So we can right click this again and we can go add uh, this time add fill. And in this fill layer, we can grab another grunge map. So with this grunge map selected, we want to change the uh, blending to add black to this um, so that it removes some of the previous white that we've used for the edges. So we can go to Linear Dodge Add 
And then if we change the balance of this, we can see it starts to remove some of them extra edges. So we just need to get the scaling right on this, just to add a little bit of extra. And then we can also go and add a fill to this as well and just sharpen it up a little bit. And then to add any extra details on this, we can right click and go to add paint. And then we can go to brushes, find a nice dirt brush. So I like to use dirt too for a lot of stuff. And then with the grayscale, we can either add white to this mask or black. So if we add white, we're going to remove some of them scratches. Just need to make sure the stroke capacity is on 100. But if we add black, we're actually going to be able to add some more detail in this. Now, it's good to get as far as you can with the actual masks and then start to remove some of it so it doesn't look silly. I mean, you've got to think about where where is actually going to be on this. So if, you, if it's a panel, then how do you open it? There's going to be more wear along where you open it. Maybe someone has tried to force the way into it. So you've got some damage of the paint around where it's forced in, but you're not going to have very neat, um, smooth whir lines around every single edge. That's just unrealistic. And you see a lot of people making that mistake and it's just, just doesn't work. Just not how things would go on. And it's called um, giving your piece a story um, or the history of your piece. And you need to think about how that would be. So sometimes maybe you'll have tool marks on something. If it's something that opens like uh, this lid here, maybe we have some nice sharp lines around where you know a tool might hit. Or maybe if this opens here, the metal bit kind of bounces a little bit. So we have some marks in them places. You also might want to go around and add some additional scratches to your metal. Okay, so then you'd go over that and add as much uh, detail to that as possible. And then what we can do is create another paint layer and another folder, or we can we could duplicate this layer. And we want to remove those masks that we've made. Just want to be left with the mask editor. And I'm going to come down to the fill of this one and I'm going to change it to a lighter red. And then I'm going to come back up to that, rename it paint B. And with the mask editor, I'm going to create more of a softer whir on this. So this is like the top layer of the paint whirring from the underneath layer. So again, I'm going to come to curvature. I'm just going to increase the soft and medium levels of this. Now you can see that coming back from that edge layer there and just creating a nice soft darkness there and just making this paint all that more interesting to look at and uh, we can come up to textures as well and increase and decrease the contrast of that and the brightness so i've just changed that second texture there just to break up some of that surface And then I'm going to add a fill and this time I'm going to add a scratches to that fill. And invert them scratches. So we've got these little scratches here and I'm going to change the balance of that contrast and the scale as well. And then I'm going to change this to a, maybe a subtract. Nope. We'll do linear dodge add. Okay. We'll put it on subtract and then we'll come back to that and then do an invert. So we just get them scratches subtracted from the original layer. And it's a little bit too mottled. So I'm going to just edit that a little bit. Just add a sharp into that as well.
So now you can see we're getting this nice worn paint can effect. So this is only a few minutes work, but already we're getting quite an interesting uh, material on the front of this. And we can maybe add a, another layer with a new roughness in there as well, put it underneath. And we could add a nice interesting roughness map to that again. And we just keep building it up like that, adding a really nice complex material with some simple generators. And that's how you layer stuff up. So what you've got to be looking for is, does it look like the material that you want it to look like? So you've got to make sure that stuff matches up to real world materials. So is it paint? Is it metal? Is it plastic? Is it rubber? Is it leather? And can you tell without knowing, if you show this to someone else, can they pick out what their materials are actually, what the base of their materials are actually made from. And this should be the case for everything you do. You've got to say, okay, I've done a rubber here, the color's right, but does the material look right? Is the roughness right? Does it shine the right way? Um, does it look metal or does it look like plastic? Is it man-made or is it, is, it, is it organic? And that's what you should be asking yourself as you do all this kind of stuff. Um, so there is nothing else to it. Every single thing that you make, whether it's plastic, leather, or metal, will be laid up in the same kind of way. You start with your base layer, and then you add your layers above that. And you've also got to think about your roughness as well. So I like to add them to a separate layer. Uh, you could do it in the same layer if you want, but it, it, it does add a little bit more control if you do it on a separate layer. So for base painting, uh, that's pretty much it. 